However, did you all get your goodie bags for all of you out there? If you check in your bag, please raise your hand if you got one of the golden tickets. Because you have won a Dual XR9 285 sponsored by AMD. Come on, who's got him? There's 10 golden tickets and there's also 10 ships. I think there might even be one vandal. Is that correct, Ben? Ben, where is Ben Lesnick? Oh. Anyone got one? Put your hands up. Yes, we have a winner. How many more do we have out there? Okay, so on the, on the, it should say where you go to, re, to reclaim your card and please get that tonight. So if you can all put up your things so we can film that real quick. <laughs> Are we ready for the show? <laughs> Come on, let's hear it. Put your hands up in the air. <laughs> Cheer. <laughs> All right. Are we ready to cue the video? We are. Let's, let's do it. Fade the lights down. Play the video. Are we ready to cue the video? My name is Chris Roberts, and I would like to build a universe with you. Welcome to the stage, Chris Roberts. Good morning, everyone. So I'm going to build a universe. I'm going to do a PC game like the old Wink Man as I did, which was if you've got a great PC, this is really going to show it off. You're not going to be able to get this experience anywhere else. I'm hoping that a lot of you want to be in this universe, because I do, and I want to play this game. Um, <laughs> apparently, uh, the, our site is uh, having millions of hits and is overloaded. So everyone out there, please be patient. okay, six million two hundred and twenty two thousand three hundred and fifty three dollars. Woo! Everybody, let's get on this. Um, Let's get it out. We're in this side of it actually. A few months that's going to become much bigger. So in here is my office. The idea is to try and have an open work environment so everyone can. We are about to test the live client for the hangar module. Here we go. Signing in. Control, you read me. Mission Control, you read me. Commander Roberts, Basic Command, Boundary 42, come in. module that will allow you to create your own branded group identity on the website called an organization. We are really the first uh, you know, game of this scope or this level that is 100% funded and backed by the people that love this kind of game and want to play this kind of game.
Why don't you take a look at what you've done for us? Take a look at where we are now. <laughs> I feel like the head of the table. Pass the butter, please. Here right now is we, we've got these new tables here. This is this is the programming bit. Look at that. It smells beautiful too. New. <laughs> that new car smells. Bit there, we got six desks down the middle. We're putting another pods of four here, so we'll be able to have plenty of artists here to build those beautiful ships we have to make. This is the space, as you can see, it's in lovely disarray. There's stuff on the floor and everywhere. Guys, so here are the bunch more guys already joining us. We have more joining us as well, but uh, we're well into production. What is that? Oh, wait, hang on, it's coming up. Do you see what's on Travis's screen? Whoa! That's it. The deadline where you start to see all of these different systems getting pushed together, pushed together, pushed together, and it starts coming together right in front of your eyes, and the, the rate at which it's coming together starts to accelerate and accelerate and accelerate, but you still have that hard and fast deadline, and so you're hoping that knee of the curve is fast enough to get you to where you want to be when you actually have to be there. That's probably the most scary part, is seeing it all come together and wondering, oh my god, is it fast enough? I'm Sandy Gardner. 24 teams begin a journey to become part of video gaming history. The level of animation and detail and figuring out how things fold up and how they fit in and how they work was really impressive. The exterior is just beautiful. I think it's I think it's my favorite ship of the competition. The winner is Four Horsemen. But your guys' ship is so good that it kind of pushes our own internal artists and they have to step it up and compete so well done guys hey everybody welcome to wingman's hangar the final episode we're now transferring the show to a community show out in los angeles <laughs> all right guys well that's kind of it this is episode 72 with the the, the, the final wingman's hangar so um where are we gonna see him in, in the, the verse, verse. First, I'm joined by a very special guest, uh, Mr. William Lewis. Introduce yourself. <laughs> I'm James Pugh. Round. I see them turn around plenty of times. Didn't dodge that one. I did not. Good morning. Welcome back to Bug Smashers. <laughs> Put vodka in here. Thank you everybody for coming and thank you to everybody who's online. Chris Roberts. Hey guys. Last year we had an amazing uh, Gamescom. There was about a thousand people and it was uh, completely an overwhelming experience. Uh, this is even bigger so I think it's a little more overwhelming. And now the other thing we've got is two new game modes. So we got Vandal Swarm Co-op. So the other big mode we're doing is the Murray Cup Racing. Uh, so it's a whole racing game mode.
we have something else that we're going to show you, which is the multi-crew um, sort of ship combat. Um, so we're going to do a, a little a little demo. It's part of what we're working on. I mean, there's a lot of stuff to happen multi-crew. This, my friends, is going to be good. Hey, how are you? How are we doing tonight? Yeah? So, um, well, we've come quite a ways. Uh, it's amazing to just to go back and look at what the Hornet looked in 2012, what it looked in 2013, what it looks like now. Uh, so CitizenCon generally is sort of a celebration of what we've done the previous year, what we've achieved. So this year we're going to have an in-depth report from each one of the studios and uh, we'll talk about some things and then at the very end of it we'll have a, uh, a little surprise live demo and a few things on the way. So where are we going? There we go. All right. So the first uh, studio that we're going to talk a bit about and show a little video is uh, Santa Monica, uh, which is the Los Angeles studio here. So hello. I don't know if uh, the LA team here, I think there's a bunch of you guys at the back. So they, they've, been, they've been working very hard on pretty much everything. But uh, you know, the uh, arena commander and the dogfighting was uh, you know, a large part of what we did, the multi-crew ship combat. And even contribute a little bit to the demo you'll see at the end of uh, the end of this session. Uh, but let's uh, roll the video. Hey everyone, welcome to uh, Santa Monica. This is Third Street Promenade and it's where our Los Angeles development studio is. So just come with me and I'll show you inside. Okay, this is our um, fancy Santa Monica abode. So 
So uh, come in with me. There we go. All right, this is where everyone comes to get caffeined up. But this is um, where we do a huge amount of uh, meetings. Then up here is uh, where the development area is. Here is the sort of main development area. This is where most of the engineers in LA and designers are based in production. Over here we have the cinematic section. So this is John and Chris working on something that you're going to see. And in here is where the universe is created. Here is our sort of ship center. It's our concept section over here. Francesca, who's our willful HR person. Here's our community section. We're editing in here. And here's Ben at his desk. I will let you guys uh, listen to some other guys here at the Santa Monica offices tell you about what we did last year and what we are going to be doing next year. Hi, I'm Alex Mayberry, executive producer on Star Citizen. I've been focusing on working with all the studios around Cloud Imperium to get them moving forward on all the other modules of the game. Travis Day, I'm the producer of Cloud Imperium Games. On the game side, I've been focusing predominantly on Arena Commander, the ship pipeline, the items and components pipeline, as well as the FPS. Hi, I'm Sandy Gardner. I'm the VP of Marketing. The past year, I have been doing all the marketing. I also oversee the customer service, which has been going really well. I'm Paul Reindel, and I'm the lead engineer here in LA. This this year I worked on gameplay needs we're doing here in LA, but also big picture plannings for the persistent universe. Hey, my name is Forrest Stefan, lead technical artist at Cloud Imperium Games. This past year we've been working on building all the tech necessary to create Star Citizen. Everything from what level the designers need to do in the engine, what world builders need to do, what artists need to make the art, functionality. Gameplay. I'm Dan Tracy, I'm lead technical designer, and I'm Bug Smasher's troll. The latest stuff that we've been working on actually is the, the legacy variants, so we wanted to actually pull in all of the setups of the Hornets, the 300 series, and the Aurora's. Mark Abent, Supreme Bug Smasher. So this year I've been working on bugs, bugs, and more bugs. Hi, I'm Gurmuk Basin, and I'm a concept artist. I've been working on quite a few ships. Now I'm currently working on the Carrick. I'm Dave Heddock, I'm lead writer. For the past year, I've been working on a lot of Squadron 42 stuff. I'm Ben Lesnick, I'm game designer and senior community manager. For the past year, well, two years really, I've been working on building Star Citizen's community. I'm Zan Bien, I'm the HUD and user interface designer. So in the past year, uh, I've been working on art for the ship HUD and user interface. The accomplishment I'm most proud of really is putting a lot of process in place, getting roadmaps in place, making a lot of progress on all the different modules. The release of Arena Commander was really big for us. This is something we've been working on since the inception of the studio. It felt really good to get at least the first iterations out there. It's just been a really good feeling to have that out live to the community. It's something we really wanted to give to everybody. The thing I'm most proud of, the multi-crew ship working was the physical world inside the ship and walking around while the ship is flying and using the turret and that was pretty cool. I guess I'm just proud of how far we've come in two years with such an awesome community. I think the thing that I'm most proud of is how all of the modules are actually coming together. It's quite exciting. I'm very proud of this team. If there was one thing that I was most proud of, it's getting a, a game that people can play to get dogfighting, People can now race their ships. Our characters are basically these ships that are by far the most complicated assets that I've ever worked on in a game. And to be able to see all of that actually working in the game is pretty uh, impressive. And it's definitely something to be proud of. We had this weird bug where when you get into a cockpit, and multiplayer only, the player could stand up randomly. It was a very annoying but fulfilling bug to fix. The one that stands out the most to me is the Constellation Phoenix. The community seems to love it, and uh, I'm definitely very proud of that. It's sort of the whole thing. Seeing it from the inside out, it's just been, you know, it's been incredible. So I guess what I'm, what I'd be most proud of is the fact that we kind of separated out all of our information into modular components, and this will allow us to easily iterate on the user interface going forward. So this will probably be a bit of a transition year for us where we move from working on what at the time was the flagship product of Arena Commander and really focusing on getting that out there to more of a supporting role as the Persistent Universe FPS and Squadron 42 and social modules start to roll out of the factory, we need to make sure that we are supporting them with the features that they need at the times that they need them. So for the next year, my team here in LA will still focus on getting all the flight characteristics, getting the whole missile and radar system running, and all the other fun gameplay features we want to have in our dogfight scenarios. There is going to be a lot happening this next year. We are looking at 
esports competition, a webisode series. Squadron 42 is going to come online, which I'm really excited about. The things that we'll be contributing to most uh, this year and will be uh, one of the funnest challenges and the big up payoffs is to finally have multi-crew ships. Finally get that moment to play with your friends in the same ship, I think is uh, gonna be pretty great. What we're contributing here from LA is all the core mechanics for all the dogfighting. That ties in heavily with every other section of the game, so even the stuff with the FPS and how we're doing the troop deployments, you guys will be seeing quite a lot with how we tie in the ship boarding mechanics with the dogfight aspects and then how that seamlessly transitions into first person. The thing I'm most excited about working on, in fact, which I'm working right now on with uh, Dan Tracy, is signatures. They cover everything from how our items generate signatures for balance, to how missiles track on the things, to how your radar sees things. I concept all the ships that we do in-house. At the moment, I'm definitely very excited for the Carrick. It's turning out really cool. In the next year, we're going to be doubling down on communication, just keeping you informed about the game, what's coming through around the verse, through the forums, through comlinks, uh, every way we can. What I'm going to be contributing, Star Citizen, kind of in the next year, improving the immersion of you know, your, your cockpits. All the cockpits are going to be fully functional and, and kind of this you know, sophisticated piece of software that just feels alive. The fact that we have players backing us and the ability to be open with our development and be transparent about what we're doing is really unique. So knowing that all the backers are always like watching our progress, it's kind of scary, but on the other hand, it also like pushes very hard. It makes you push yourself to a higher level of excellence because the only people you're answering to are the players that you want to play your game. And it's really a lot of fun to be able to share our work in real time. Just makes you kind of want to work harder and, and make sure that what you're doing is, is going to be fun for people to play and look as cool as it possibly can. Having hundreds of thousands of fans be able to see the development process is a bit bewildering. However, I just watch, I watch a lot of people play on Twitch, so I'm actually watching you guys also, so. I'm hoping that most of our community like what we do, and we certainly appreciate you guys. It's amazing to be able to contribute directly to our audience that loves our game. So I hope you guys enjoyed that quick uh, insight into what some of the people here have been working on last year, what they're looking forward to working on this coming year, and what they found the most challenging and interesting about uh, working on Star Citizen. It never ceases to uh, surprise and amaze me. I mean, we're, we've built, we're building this hugely ambitious game, and just the dynamic of doing it in such an open method and having such uh, interesting and great feedback from everyone and the potential to sort of flesh it out and detail it to a level that um, you normally wouldn't get to do is the most fun and enjoyable experience I've ever had making any game. And I can't wait till you guys get to run around and fly and explore the full universe because all the elements that I can see sort of in various stages of production are all going to come together into this holistic, immersive world to adventure around in. And I think it's going to be an experience unlike any other. Anyway, thank you for your time. Thank you for your support. And, um, well, see you in the verse. All right. Uh, so I'd actually like to bring Alex uh, Mabry up on stage. So you get to meet and see him besides just being in the video. Uh, so Alex joined us earlier this year from Blizzard where he was there for 10 years and uh, is the executive producer on the project and um, has uh, really been helping because we, you know, we've grown from well, seven people that pretty much were there in 2012 to probably by the time that we had the games uh, con demo the first time in 2013, I think you know, maybe we had about 30 employees and uh, perhaps 20 or so people on contract, and now we're close to uh, 280, and we've got uh, three internal studios, uh, you know, the LA one, uh, the one in Austin, Texas, the one in Manchester, and we also have external uh, studios that are working on it, um, the uh, redacted FPS studio, who you guys all know, uh, but we'll be uh, showing you uh, some pretty awesome stuff they're doing in a few weeks' time, so we have none of their stuff here yet, but I think you guys are going to really like it. It's, it's, it's looking really great. Um, Behavior, who's doing an amazing job up in Montreal. Turbulent, who also in Montreal are doing an amazing job on our, our platform. And uh, of course, we have some other contractors, but where's Alex? Come here, Alex. So this is Alex Mabry. Um, I can't actually see where our um, little, 
Can I get to our, there you go. All right, so this is what we're doing in LA. Uh, we've done a lot, um, you know, obviously uh, the space combat is the uh, focus and sort of the core system and then overseeing the overall project. Uh, we're also overseeing the ship pipeline. Uh, it doesn't mean the ships are all being built in LA. Some have been built in LA, some have built in Austin, some have built in Manchester, some have been built with our, out, our outsources. And um, uh, we're also overseeing the uh, first person shooter production and we're obviously doing community management with uh, Ben, who you guys all know, and James Hugh, and the rest of the guys like Will, and uh, which you'll meet a little later. But I thought, um, you yeah, know, so do you have a, where's your, okay, give it here. Yeah. <laughs> all right, can you hear me? <laughs> all right. So, uh, you know, one thing I thought is kind of interesting, because we're doing development very differently than I've ever done development before, because we're, in, we're incredibly distributed. I mean, we're between Locate, I mean, well, we have people in China working on the game. We have people anywhere across North America. Mexico. Mexico. Canada. Canada. Well, that's North America, but go on. Well, it's true. Uh, yes, but all over the place. And, and uh, <laughs> that's part of the challenge. I mean, uh, this is also different than anything I've ever done. And so, um, you know, typical sort of uh, industry standards and practices don't always make sense in a distributed environment. So. Um, you know, Chris's vision for this game is huge, as you all know, and so one of the challenges is sort of, you know, how do we get there? How do we achieve what Chris wants to achieve? And, and that's really what my job is about. You know, my job is to focus on the day-to-day, -day, but also look beyond that to next week and next month and next year, five years from now, hopefully ten years from now, and building the infrastructure so that we can continue to grow and build on this vision and achieve it and make sure that down the road um, everything is solid and there to make it all happen. So, I mean, I think like, so I mean, people probably don't appreciate this, but like in the, in production, so production for us is a sort of producers, associate producers, production managers, production coordinators, and they're the guys that sort of go to everyone's desk and say, where are you at on your task? Track it, update it in, uh, we use Jira, which is uh, uh, a task management software. Um, which you know, most other people don't like to use. Production people love it. <laughs> artists hate it. We can never get artists to update any of their own uh, Jira tickets. But uh, in the production department, I mean, we've got across the studios. How many do we have? Oh man, we've been hiring a lot, so it's uh, probably a dozen to fifteen. Yeah, I mean, we got we got you and three other people. Uh, we've got Travis, we Cami, uh, Darian. Uh, here locally. In Austin, we have Jake Ross and Mark Hong, and, and now Jason Hutchins has joined us, and Jeremy Masker. And in the UK, we have Ricky Jutley and Tom Johnson and Drew. Drew right. Uh, and I think they've got another one coming on. So, you know, Aaron can tell us that. We're <laughs> actually building our production staff because as the game grows and as we hire more people, producers are kind of the glue that kind of holds things together. We're the backstop. We make sure that things don't you know fall through the cracks. We're the ones coordinating all of this kind of chaos that happens in development and, and controlling that and turning it into a plan and making sure that everybody's on the same page. Uh, one of the tricks about, about being distributed is using the time zones to our advantage. I think one of the cool things is how in the UK, like we wake up in the morning and we have an email from the UK and it says, here's what we did while you were asleep and here's what we need you to do while we're sleeping. And then we do all those things, and we give them a handoff in the same way so that we take advantage of the sun. Yeah, yeah no, totally. I mean, it's, it's, I have to say it's completely a different way of uh, making a game of this scale. And the other complication, obviously, is the fact that we're actually a live game as well as we're in development. So there's a lot of boring stuff, which I'm sure we're boring you with, uh, that's about you know, release management and what's, what like, code streams we're working on and what data streams we're working on in terms of updating the release we currently have live, which is what you guys are playing, uh, which is in the public-facing nomenclature 0 0.9.1.1, I think. Um, yes. For us, it's 13.1, uh, and we'll be about ready to give you 13.2. Uh, but we have to keep those streams, plus we have other streams that we develop other things, whether it's uh, the space stuff or the FPS stuff. And so just managing all that process requires a huge amount of communication, and that's actually kind of one of the big things that uh, production does on the project. And uh, I, you know, in some ways, it's a bit of an unsung thing because you sort of always focus on pretty graphics or like a cool piece of engineering that has a really you know, great result. But without having sort of production as a glue to pull it all together to do something of this scope and ambition, it's, uh, it's not really possible. So, um, so anyway, I thought I'd 
bring Alex up. I don't know whether you guys found it interesting, but it certainly is a small insight into some of the stuff we do. Um, so let's carry on. Thanks, Alex. Good to have you aboard. All right. So uh, the next studio that we're going to highlight is uh, a studio that's uh, dear to my heart since that's where I grew up, Manchester. Um, so let's go. Hi, I'm Aaron Roberts, I'm the studio director. We've been really hammering away on Squadron 42, as well as focusing on a bunch of the pipelines in terms of how we do the characters, how we get the ships working. I'm Nick Elms, creative director. I'm Luke Presley, I'm a designer. I've been working on things like lobbies, leaderboards, game modes, new game mechanics. I'm Paul Jones, I'm the art director. Hi, I'm Ian, and I'm lead environment artist. We've done Arena Commander, we've done Broken Moon, Dying Star, Squadron 42. You know, we're just working like crazy on missions 1 to 10. Hi, I'm Bjorn Tenstrom. I'm Lee Vehicle Artist. I'm Jay Mahotra, I'm one of the artists on the vehicle team. At the moment we're mainly focusing on the Gladius, Gladiator, Retaliator, as well as a couple of cap ships. I'd say the thing I'm most proud of is uh, the Vandal Swarm cult mode. Yeah, you pull that together in a day. Yeah, yeah, we managed to take the single player version and turn it into the co-op. We had nothing one morning, and then by the evening, there was four of us playing. A lot of noise from that side of the room. It, it was the most fun we've had. It just clicked. Yeah, yeah, it just worked. From what we've accomplished this year, I'm personally most proud of getting levels out to you guys. I mean, these levels are so big, so what we're showing now is Shubin's facility called Archon. Now Shubin Intercellar is a corporation, a mining corporation. The facility that you can see is the Archon. Now this thing is big, like six kilometers big. And currently it's in its gray box phase. So you're seeing full mesh detail, no textures or shaders. Just the physical act of making these levels was uh, initially so hard because the CryEngine was custom built for small environments and we had to render big space scenes. That's a big achievement. For me, it's, it's gotta be the fact that we're trying to achieve something pretty special. We're aiming so high in, in terms of visual fidelity, in terms of what we want the player to sort of feel and be evoked in, in the gameplay that they've got. It's quite the challenge, but at the same yeah. time, it's, when you're faced with a challenge, it's something you kind of have to sort of endure and get through, because at the end of the day, we're going to provide an experience that's just going to blow people away. Going forward, um, loads to do. The big one for us is Squadron 42. We're looking to have the vertical slice working for the end of this year. And then, of course, next year, we plan to release the first chapter of Squadron 42 for you guys. This coming year is going to be a real busy year. Squadron 42. As much time as we can put into it, we've got to get that mission one to one to ten out. We will cram in as much detail, fidelity, finesse. I mean, what we got planned for Squadron 42, it's such a high vision. You know, we're doing everything we can to deliver that. We're going to totally knock it out of the park. One of the things that uh, we're most excited about uh, adding imminently to Star Citizen is the emissions gameplay and the missile gameplay. Yeah, we're going to be um, exposing the power management to the player so that he can now turn off certain parts of his systems or completely. Yep. And, go cold. Yeah, go cold. Turns off, turn off his engines, cool down and, and hide. Hide behind asteroids and here to you know to all radar like debris. space debris. Yeah. There's there's a lot of uh, gameplay that uh, that we're planning around that. One of the um, larger um, uh, teams we work with are actually the guys at Moon Collider who've been doing a lot of the AI work for us. So you remember all the space combat stuff they've been working on, which has been really cool in the last year. And we've, you've seen from them in the past, but now they're actually not only improving the space combat, but also they're starting to work on a bunch of stuff for the persistent universe and, and basically for Squadron 42 to bring the actual characters and the AI and the, and the people to life in the game. It's been a really exciting year in the development of Kythera. We started with dogfighting. At the very beginning of the year, we did have basic dogfighting working, but it was only AI versus AI. It wasn't until later on that you could actually start flying a ship as a player, and at that point we had to really tune the AI and start making it fun. And this finally culminated in the release of Arena Commander, in particular the Vandal Swarm game mode, which is all about playing against AI. And we're really proud of that. It's the first time that Kythera is actually in use in a game by 
hundreds of thousands of people. Yeah, so it really reassures us that what we're doing is is the right stuff. So uh, one of the uh, really uh, interesting things they're working on right now is uh, what we call smart objects. And smart objects are basically places uh, and locations that we can basically design can put down which the AI or the characters in the game will interact with. So a character will know, or an AI will know where to go to sit down, will know, will know where to go to serve someone, will know where to go if he's buying something. So when you're going through the game, you actually see a living, breathing environment, which is what we really want to create um, with the Persistent Universe. And also, uh, the, all this kind of stuff will run through Squadron 42 as well. So when you're on a capital ship and you're going through life on that capital ship, you'll see people actually performing tasks and doing um, interesting things. So some of our future plans um, over the next year. We're going to be working on some of the basics of the PU, looking the AIs interacting with other objects within the world. Yeah, giving them a schedule and so they're going to have a whole heap of things that they'll do. You can watch them and they'll seem like they're intelligent and uh, it's part of a living world. Also making flight more advanced. We've got the dogfighting AI with single ships at the moment, but when the multi-crew ships come in and when the capital ships come in, we want to start controlling those and controlling different aspects of those. Yeah, so really groups of AI working together to coordinate a larger ship. It's pretty crazy the fact that there's probably literally hundreds of thousands of people looking at our work, following it, and, and just... Every day. Literally, almost every day, we'll, we'll look in the forums and there'll be stuff. It's great, like, it's, it's a lot yeah, of fun. It. Yeah, it's very open, very honest. I read the forums all the time, and their feedback and opinions they have on there are just fantastic. I mean, I, they actually affect the way I design things. The feedback's phenomenal, and that's what Arena Commander's about. You yeah. know, we, we get something out there, the see thing, how it goes. Yeah. We can do that in this game. We can actually, like, put it out there <laughs> and you know, get their feedback. And stuff they like, work on stuff that. they hate, yeah. we, we take it on board. Yeah, it's not like releasing a final thing and just saying, <laughs> no, you're stuck with that. I've yeah. never worked on a game like that. Yeah. And it's, it's, it makes me come to work you know, every day. Every month, every couple of months, you know, your work's out there and you get that direct feedback. So you can actually tailor, you know, your processes. Uh, you know, it's quite an organic process. And then we brought in talented people. And now the whole team is the, the quality level is just growing and growing right. and growing higher and higher. And I think the fans can see this, and that you know that's what I really like is that I think they're sort of you know really appreciating where we're coming from. You know, strive to build the best damn space game in the sure. world. And I think uh, I think we're well on our way. So all in all, a massive year last year. We plan to have a bigger one this year coming and I'm glad you guys are with us along for the ride. Then go to the presentation. There you go. So anyway, uh, you know, Foundry 42, they're doing Squadron 42. They're also actually uh, taking over being the lead studio on Arena Commander. So they're supporting the live aspects of Arena Commander. So the LA studio and the UK studio are working together on that. But the sort of production leadership's uh, coming out of uh, Manchester. Uh, they're going to be working on the capital ship systems and components and uh, the character pipeline. Do uh, you want to tell us about any of this stuff, Aaron? Come on. Uh, yeah, I'm really <laughs> crap at this, sorry. But anyway, so um, uh, yeah, I mean, basically this last year uh, has been uh, quite uh, frightening because if you remember last year, you kind of, I wasn't even hit at this event. I was kind of, we filmed madly because I'd literally just fit, quit a job to come and join um, you guys and do this. And since then, we had to build a studio. And I think we really only got up and running really end of January, beginning of February. So we've gone from nothing to like 68 uh, yep. development staff working yep. Man out of the Man office. Manchester is actually our biggest internal studio right now. So it's yeah, pretty impressive. It's, uh, it's, uh, so, and, it's, and the thing is, we've really just actually we're getting a lot of momentum now as well. And then working on Arena Commander, Squadron 42. And then we have, we're tying up a bunch of guys in Europe and the UK as well. So it's really good. But I know, I mean, the, the guys are, you know, we're, absolutely, we're just absolutely loving this way of developing with, um, with everybody because, you know, it's, we've all just spent a lot of time just doing the typical path and this is like a big change for us. So, 
So now it's, this is awesome. All right. Well, and also speaking of Arena Commander, whenever we get there. So the uh, just to let you guys know, we're planning on getting uh, the full sort of V1 implementation out before the end of this year on Arena Commander, uh, which would include the lobby system. Uh, by the way, I've been told I need to talk more to you, although it's kind of hard when our presentation's behind. Uh, we're uh, like making a lot of improvements to the maps. I mean, yeah, I think your guys, right, Aaron, the, we're doubling the size to so have a larger play area. Yeah, we're basically doubling it. So since we doubled the speed of the ships, we thought we'd better double the size of the maps. And so, but that also means that uh, we're also, we thought well, we're not just going to double the size of the maps, we're actually going to do some improvements to the maps as well. So you guys should see that um, pretty soon. And I mean, I would say that the other thing is that you got to remember that we're doubling the size of the maps for now, but as we're working on the sort of large, what we call large world, which is moving to 64 bits in terms of address space, because uh, right now it's in 32 bits, then we can have, you know, maps if we wanted to that would be millions of kilometers in scale instead of, uh, you know, right, right now if you get more than about eight kilometers from the origin, you'll start to get uh, floating point imprecision because this is totally technical, but Basically, we have a lot of stuff in the cockpit that's within a meter. So when your hands on the joystick and all this stuff, you know, you you have stuff that needs like millimeter precision. Uh, and with 32-bit floating point, when you get to about sort of eight kilometers out, you start to lose that precision. Which is, if we let you fly to sort of like further on on the map, you would start to see like jittering and shaking when you're sitting in the cockpit. So that's kind of why the first stage we just go to eight kilometers, and then when Large World comes online, which is a massive undertaking because we have to shift the entire cry engine to 64-bit to from 32-bit. And uh, can't remember, I think we were looking at it, I think overall, including the SDK stuff, there's about 10 million lines of code. In the core engine itself, there's about 5 million lines of code. Of course, not all of this is uh, address space and all the rest of the stuff, but it's a huge amount. I mean, there's literally tens of thousands of uh, code uh, modules that we sort of have to go to make that. So it's uh, something that we've been working on for, for a while and we'll continue to work on, and we would hope uh, that we'll have it up and running um, probably in the next uh, couple of months, and it will be before we do the multi-crew uh, ship stuff. But uh, that's really what opens up the, the universe and allows the big persistent universe levels. And, and, and I would say that that's one of the big things that, like, right now, you know, I see a lot of comments about certain gameplay in Arena Commander, and it's a very, very, very sort of small set of what the final game's going to be because it's really about small, single-seater ships right now, and it's sort of very close in dogfighting, and there's a huge amount of stuff that, that will sort of come onto play. As soon as you get larger sort of areas in terms of whether you're sort of playing cat and mouse or you're hiding, uh, you can sort of run away. You, there's, there's In terms of the combat and the, and the sort of interaction that you'll have in space, there's, there's a huge, you know, there's so much more that comes with a much larger play space. And, and also we have a lot larger sort of array of ships that you'll be using with different roles, and so it's not all just about sort of single-seater uh, combat. So, uh, so just remember that when you're, when you're talking about Arena Commander, because that's just a very small part of a much bigger game. And sometimes the overall picture and vision, we sort of kind of know where it's going to go. And so there are some things that we make choices with that may not seem obvious in Arena Commander, but once you see the bigger picture, they'll, they, will, they will make sense. Um, all right, so uh, I think we're doing improvements to the uh, racetrack stuff. Right, Aaron? Yeah, we're going to, uh, once again, um, to make it uh, a little more interesting uh, and then uh, put some new stuff in there. And we'll probably make sure that we, um, you know, kind of um, uh, move up some of the race modes and stuff for that. So that'll be definitely something that Which, we'll by the way, to. I have to say that the racing is kind of one of the, the, the kind of funnest, more interesting stuff is because, uh, you know, it went live and then within like a day or two, there was scores that like no one in our, you know, even our best players in QA were like, how did they manage to make that score? Uh, so that just shows you, you can never be as good as your community. Yeah, no, uh, I, I actually told the guys, as soon as you go live, get up there, get the top scores, and then make it so people are trying to beat your scores. And before they got up there, people had faster scores. <laughs> so it was, it was pretty bad. Uh, yeah, you know, the other things that are going into 1.0 is, uh, and you heard both the UK designers and uh, engineers and the uh, LA ones talk about it, but uh, the whole missile and countermeasure and... Uh, sort of signature system. So we've we actually designed it a long time ago. The issue is we haven't really sort of fully implemented it all the way through the system and, and actually created enough items to be able to do that and balance the items correctly. So that's one of the major pushes for 
1.0 to make sure all the systems are there and we actually have a variety of systems that you can plug and play so you'll actually really feel a difference between different you know radars you'll use um, you know different missiles you'll use uh, and and I think on a gameplay wise there'll be a just sort of a lot more sort of rock paper scissors that will come from that it was always part of the original design it's always actually been stubbed in there but now we're taking the time to finish it out actually have the signature system work properly and you'll be able to sort of manage your various signatures whether it's sort of heat or um, you know electromagnetic uh, in terms of being detectable by other players being detectable by missiles and so on so I think that's actually gonna make a I'll add a huge amount to the, the gameplay in space combat um, I just talked about part of that. So power management also runs in with that. Uh, proximity warming Im Im improvements. So it's not telling you colliding with something when you're not going to collide with something. <laughs> uh, and uh, you know, we, we, we've actually had a big sort of uh, uh, third person camera and spectator push that you guys haven't seen yet. But uh, we sort of want to make those sort of feel a bit more sort of organic and uh, almost human operated and also have some fun cinematic stuff. because. Like actually, one of the funnest things in in sort of Arena Commander is actually watching a whole bunch of you guys, you know, in our community go out and make videos. I mean, you know, some of you guys have made sort of you know like trailers for Arena Commander that are better than some of the stuff that we've done, and it's you guys have captured amazing footage, and we want to have more tools to do that because uh, I mean, you know, let's, the graphics are awesome. It's great to see like ships like that blow up in real detail, and so I want to see more of that. So we're going to put things in for that. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I sort of alluded to more about the items, but um, for 1.0, we're going to have a huge amount of sort of new items and ships, so they really can be sort of mixing and matching uh, in the game. So right now, we basically have an item set that was the same item set we had when uh, we released Hangers in 2013. And yeah, one of the core ideas is we can switch out. I mean. You know, all the bit, I mean, like a Hornet itself has about 60 items attached to it, but it's everyone's got all the stock items. So you should be able to, you know, switch out your targeting computer. You should be able to switch out your coolers. You should be able to switch out your various weapons, uh, your thrusters, and balance it. And they all have sort of trade offs, which is, you know, we've talked about where it, whether it's whether they consume more power, um, you know, they weigh more, uh, or, you know, they're less reliable, or, uh, you know, they give off more emissions. And so I actually. You know, that will be kind of interesting to see how people sort of do some loadouts. I mean, there already is a little bit of ice in Arena Commander where people strip, like, you know, various guns from, I don't know, like a 325 and put it on a Hornet or whatever uh, because they feel like it has a little bit of advantage, and it probably does because we haven't balanced all the... We really haven't balanced the guns very well, so we, we do need to do that, and that will be in uh, 1.0 as well. Um, really should add a little monitor here so I can actually see what the presentation was. Uh, and uh, then, yeah, the final one that we're going to do here is uh, uh, the leaderboard. Uh, so there's a lot of, you know, we've been getting a lot of feedback from you guys on the leaderboards. Uh, and, you know, by the way, this is kind of why we, we do what we're doing. I mean, I know that it can sort of seem that things are a bit stupid or silly or broken. Uh, but from a development standpoint, it's actually really awesome to push something out, even if, you, like, you know that it's not quite 100% the way you would want it and see what works and what doesn't work and what people are interested in and what aren't interested in. And, in, in. and that's one of the reasons why I actually think by the time we have all these elements together that I think the game is just going to be fun because you know, we've had, we have so much iteration and we have so much sort of great feedback loop and we're sort of allowed to do that because you guys have been so generous in supporting us and allowing us to do that because obviously this sort of stuff takes time and takes money to do. But it really, I think, is going to make the game very polished by the time it's going to be live. Yeah, and I think in some awesome. ways, sorry, do you want no, to go ahead. Sorry, I, I, I'm I, I, guilty of talking too much. The other thing is like um, it speeds up development as well in a lot of ways because we don't go away, work on something for a long time, and then put it out there and then realize that actually it doesn't work. And so by getting it out there as fast, we get the feedback, and and then basically, and because of that, we don't waste time going down like routes that we could have wasted time on. Yeah, I mean, so that's a you know like so a good example is the next patch we'll do 13.2 is going to have some significant flight and targeting uh, tweaks and changes, and I think you guys are going to like it. So right now, I'll say that like with the uh, sort of, uh, I keep saying 13.2, I should say uh, V0.9.2. But with V0.9, we sort of changed around to make the targeting sort of a bit more uh, hardcore and not, you know, the original implementation had more of sort of an auto-aim, which wasn't necessarily so skillful. So 
what we will have next one is keeps the skill, but also uh, we just have there's some really cool stuff. Basically, it's it has a sort of dynamic approach. So as you sort of get close to your target, the actual inputs you're scaling sort of scales down, so it's not overcorrecting so much. Uh, and I have to say, playing it with joystick and gamepad and all the rest of the stuff, um, it feels awesome. So I think you guys are going to like it. Uh, that's in the near future, in a few weeks. Um, and then, you know, obviously, long term, uh, there'll be V0 1.0. So you're not going to get an exact date. Get an exact date. <laughs> I have learned my lesson. <laughs> We're, I'm an optimist, you know, that's my problem. I, I always hope we're going to do it, but yeah, no, it's, the process is such a big process now, and I mean, just, the, just to let you guys know, like, when we decide to go with a, with a patch, uh, it's about an eight-hour process from that point to deliver it to everyone, and if we get into it and we get far down and QA tests it, and then somewhere in QA they find one thing that's broken, we've sort of lost five or six hours, and we've got to restart the whole process, so very easily for stuff that you wouldn't normally catch, you could not catch it for a day or two, all of a sudden you've lost a day or two. So that's kind of why we think, oh, we're going to get it here, and then it sort of becomes another week. And it's, it's not like there were major showstoppers, it's just that you didn't find one, and then one pops up at the last minute, and you've got to start the whole thing again. So, um, But uh, I think I've talked enough. Aaron, you want any last words to... Uh, uh, well, I've not talked enough for the presentation, but this particular section. Go on. Yeah, I mean, uh, actually, I just want to say, um, just for myself, thanks. Uh, I want to say thanks from all the guys in the UK. Uh, and actually, you know, it's a real pleasure working with you guys. And, um, and the guys, you know, like I said, you probably saw it from them. But, you know, we absolutely love this process. And keep the feedback going. And remember, when we put a patch out, it is not final yet. So give us the feedback. And tell us you don't like it. And then we've got a chance to go. Well, tell us you stuff. like it. That's good, too. Yeah, like that yeah that's good as well. If, we all, if all we hear is bad, then that can yeah. go down a bit. But it's like just, as we put it out, that we put it out there purposely so we can get the feedback and make a brilliant game for you guys. So anyway, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Aaron. Thank you very much. We are very, very, I'm, we're very lucky to have Aaron and the, man, the UK team with us. I mean, they, they were, you know, well, they were cranking out some of the best LEGO games for a long time, and we have both a combination of some of the best people that were working there and a whole bunch of actually people that came from Crytek in the UK that are at the UK, and we, so we're very lucky. I would, I'm not sure we would have been as far along without them, so we kind of got lucky with that, which is great. So thank you, Aaron, and the guys out in the UK. Um, and so uh, now I'm going to sort of, we're going to show you, because it's always fun to have pretty graphics, a, something that you saw the cinematic guys working on um, in the LA video.
So uh, that was fun. I, I don't know if we got John Griffiths and Chris Wallach in the audience. Are you guys in the audience or not? They are. They're back there. So that's uh, due to uh, John and Chris and also uh, a bunch of the other so our character guys in Austin. And, um, and that was Behaviors Asteroid Hangar. But it, yeah, so that's our colors commercial. Kind of fun. Um, <laughs> And by the way, uh, I believe that was Sandy uh, doing the motion capture and the walking and everything else. So there you go. Uh, so um, you know, today we're putting the uh, new Cutlass and the Cutlass variants on uh, sale. So uh, the black, which has sort of gone and done the usual, um, well, Chris Smith pass is the only way I can describe it, who is back here. But he's an absolute perfectionist. So he's like, eh, you know, I just sort of needed to go and do a little more detail and PBR it up and do everything. Um, and uh, the other one is the Cutlass Red, which is our um, sort of medical um, version of the Cutlass. So inside it has uh, uh, med bays. You can fix people up, and it's sort of a rescue and recovery uh, setup. Uh, and that's all sort of detailed in it. And then the uh, more limited ship is the Cutlass Blue, which is the uh, sort of police bounty hunter version. It has holding cells in it and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, so that's the, the Cutlass uh, stuff. And if you went to the website, you could see the brochure, uh, which is very cool, um, done by David Lederman and Ryan Archer. And uh, Chris Smith did a bunch of the renders. So um, that's the Cutlass for you guys. So hopefully you like your stuff and everything else. And uh, so now we're going to uh, hear from uh, Turbulent, who are the guys uh, that have built the entire web platform, a lot of, you know, pretty much all the community tools that are used, the organizations, the, you know, the forums, the posting system that we have, and also our delivery system to actually deliver the game uh, to you guys and the account system and everything else. And uh, so let's hear from them in still, I think, probably fairly warm Montreal. Benoît Beausséjour, I'm the CTO at Turbulent. Félix Courtamanche, lead developer. Benjamin Fardel, project manager. So uh, our team is responsible for everything that's web and user facing. Well, this year we actually accomplished a lot. There's uh, a lot of stuff that uh, people see, the big stuff like the org system, um, the, uh, the new ship catalog and all that. That's a, there's a lot of new features that people were able to see in the store. But also we had a lot of day-to-day -day things, like, uh, well, there's uh, monthly, then now weekly promotions that we have to manage, and uh, there's a lot of stuff. The, the site is constantly evolving. And the new chat system, and now the new leaderboards, and all these other smaller features. What I'm most proud of in the work that we've done in the past year is the 3 holographic viewer on the web. I uh, really wanted to bring something online that was an experience that we've never seen before, and I think this holographic viewer is really the first foray in that type of environment, and I'm really proud of it. When we came to the project, the site was still in its older ver version on WordPress. It's not just a, a simple news site anymore. It, we actually made a, a whole um, interactive and complete and thorough uh, point of entry into the game. The funniest thing that happened in the studio last year uh, has definitely been Benjamin. Uh, I gave him a task to fill up the store destinations uh, from a list from ISO, which is an official uh, standard of every single country in the world. And so he was supposed to do that. But he, he did that, and the task was closed, and it's been done, and it was nice. But the, he took a list from 1986, which included East Germany and the USSR. And uh, people were somewhat offended and or uh, amazed at our <laughs> shipping options. But yeah, okay. was, as, as you can see from my reaction, <laughs> it was my fault. <laughs> that was me, entirely on me. Yeah, now we've had a couple of glitches over time, but I think so far we've done a pretty good job on uh, not crashing everything all the time. To be honest, it's really tough to, to, to know what's going to be in the website a, a year ahead because there's, there's always new stuff being added and we are still working on improving the organization system, uh, improving the uh, also well, constant improvement on other stuff like the chat system, the new leaderboards, which are going to get a lot more stuff and fluff added into them. The project that you guys have voted on 
uh, for us to do as a priority is the star map and so we'll be tackling that next and we, we really take it seriously to bring a really fully fledged star map of the known Star Citizen universe to you guys to play with so you can be completely immersed in the universe that uh, Chris is building. I really feel empowered by having to service such a massive community on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, 600,000 Star Citizen is a big deal. Uh, we try to stay informed about what you think about what we do, and this is a new feedback loop that we've been entertaining for the last year, and we would never go back to a project that doesn't have this level of involvement with the people that use our products. It's really awesome. And where you saw all the different um, shapes, that was actually, I think we have 9,800 organizations, and that was each one of the logos of the organizations all coming together to form Star Citizen. And that is, I got to say, a pretty amazing thing that you have that many different organizations all part of this game, and you know, the game isn't finished yet. I mean, it's still got a ways to go. Uh, but that's, I think, what makes uh, Star Citizen so strong. Um, so I wanted, uh, we don't have the Turbulent guys uh, down here because they're still up in Montreal, but they're awesome. I mean, they always uh, deliver. They never miss their dates. Uh, you, I don't know what they do. There's Someone's done a deal with someone somewhere or something because <laughs> I'd like to get that deal going down in our studios. Uh, but uh, I thought what would be great was to bring Ben uh, Lesnick and James Pugh out on stage. So, hey okay, everybody. Yeah, these, I, you know, th these guys, they're on the front lines every day. Uh, there's obviously, we have quite a few other people in customer service and uh, moderating, both, uh, you know, Will, who's our internal moderator, and all the, you know, amazing volunteer mods that we have. Uh, but, you know, I think, I think a lot of this is what makes us special as a game and as a community. So, Ben, come on, say something. Hey. <laughs> Hey everybody, uh, first of all, to the hardworking team at Turbulent who makes us look good every day and who has been working for about the last 72 hours straight to make this work, we are so sorry. <laughs> uh, you guys are amazing, Benoit, Benjamin, Felix, Michelle, uh, we could not do this without you. Uh, and it is going to be a really exciting year for the, the website. I don't know what they expected. Yeah. Right, let's go, let's, show, let's bring some stuff up so we can see it. There you go. This is what we're doing. Uh, I, I don't know what the team at Turbulent expected when we brought them in to work on Star Citizen. I mean, I think they thought it would be a website. Uh, the fact is they are, they are building the forefront of the game with the, the organization system, the, uh, the uh, Galactopedia. It's, it's going to be your first steps into Star Citizen. Uh, and they have risen to meet the task absolutely fantastically. Yeah, and I, and I would say that the other thing that's really great on the Turbulent side is that they're actually, all of them are gamers, right? So they're all like hardcore gamers. And so for them doing this job is like actually great because you know, normally they're doing, I don't know, something for a museum or like a car resale site. And so, you know, they, they, they're like seriously hardcore. I mean, like in some ways harder core than some of the people we've got like working on the game. And uh, so they bring a lot and I think they've, they've completely enjoyed the feedback loop because you generally don't, same way as de on the development, we enjoy the feedback loop. You, don't really get that feedback loop and the more that we build the sort of structure I mean the original vision uh, when everything was launched even at the very beginning when we launched the sort of teaser RSI site before a month before an announced Star Citizen was to sort of build a place for a community and the idea was to build a, a place for a community to stay to talk to each other to get information uh, and not have to go anywhere else and what we've been doing is sort of we took that sort of you know small little meeting room and basically building it step by step, you know, digital brick by digital brick into a, a huge palace for everyone to, to spend time, you know, and communicate and interact with each other in this universe. And it's pretty awesome. Um, so lots of great stuff coming up from Turbulent. We've got the, the map that you folks voted on. Um, you know it's going to be great. Uh, they did the Hollow Viewer, the organizations. It's, it's going to look amazing. 
Uh, we've got the Galactopedia. We're going to revamp the uh, the front page, get more people into Star Citizen. Uh, anything else? I yeah, I know. <laughs> Brian keeps on going to the, the feed. The organizations oh. drop, which is a, a I mean, yep. basically the organizations, uh, the 2.0 drop is what we need for the lobby system. So the organization stuff feeds into the lobby stuff, uh, which is kind of what we're talking about, the deep integra game integration, because a lot of the core systems that will run inside the game will first be on um, the website uh, basis. Um, are we getting anything from James? Come on, James, you got to say He's something. Say hi. He just wouldn't give me the mic. What's that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of the things I really like about Turbulent is they are in charge of everything on the website from chat, which now works, thank you guys, <laughs> to making sure posts go out and making sure our videos get embedded and everything. So they're the unsung heroes, but I'm glad we could give them their proper due. No, I mean, yeah, no, they definitely do. I mean, like, if you think about it, but you guys, I mean, I don't know if you guys are checking on the phone, but all this stuff, they're, they're pressing, like, you know, the cutlass going live, all the other stuff. They're, it's all, they do it, and, they, and you know, they're three hours ahead of L.A., and we tend to be sort of on an L.A. cycle a lot. I don't know why. I've got no idea. Uh, but, uh, you know, they're there at 3 in the morning or 4 in the morning or whatever it is, making sure the thing goes out. And, uh, I mean, that's just the, that typifies the dedication of all the teams uh, across the world that work on Star Citizen. And uh, anyway, I, it's, yeah, it's great to have them as part of the team. They're amazing. Uh, yeah, let me say a few words about the community. Uh, so when, when Chris started this, he knew that from day one, we needed the support of people who understood this game, uh, people who would get his vision. And I wish I could say I, I'm a genius. I put all that together. Uh, the fact is, you guys made it really, really easy. Uh, it, it turns out that people who are into this sort of game are creative and brilliant and amazing, and you've come together to create so much more than we ever expected. Uh, you are absolutely our partners in making this game. Um, we want to hear what you have to say. Uh, I said in the video that we're doubling down on community support in the next year. That's not uh, PR speak. Uh, we want to find every way we can to make sure that you feel like you're part of the development team. Uh, and if you have any ideas, let us know. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure they will. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. uh, thank you for making giving Star Citizen the best community in the video game universe. Yes. So I think uh, you guys are. And do we want to we want to call out? Uh, well, I think appropriately, right? So Chelsea Day's Chelsea. birthday is today. <laughs> so. Very apropos, she Chelsea's back here. So happy birthday, Chelsea. Uh, and on the right, on, do we want to call out Alexis and yeah. Will? Where are you guys? Where's Alexis, the rest of our community Will guys? And That's our real. <laughs> and over in the UK, and we've yeah, got Ali and Patrick. Uh, it's a fantastic team to work with. I am honored to be part of it. And I would say, I mean, our QA guys also help out on the customer Absolutely. service stuff. So you'll, you'll see um, some of them later on on the Austin side, and the, it's a pretty large UK QA team now. So, um, and Let me just close with one more. Uh, I just want to thank you personally, Chris. On behalf of all the team members who have been with us this whole time, you're not just making this game come true. You are giving us the experience of our lives. We, we know nothing is going to be like this again. So. Thank you for making it possible. Well, thank you. <laughs> hey, thank you. Hey, hi. Thank you. I know. Don't make that into an animated gif. Hey, I got a hard change too. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. The best community team in the world. Thank you, And the everybody. best community in the world right here. <laughs> All right, so we were at one place in Montreal, and we're, you know, literally it's, I think, about half a mile down the road is Behavior, and um, let's see what they've been up to. Mathieu Boulier, producer. 
So I'm a producer for uh, Star Citizen here at Behavior. I started uh, back in February 2013. We are a team of 40. Uh, we do have programmers, designers, and artists uh, working with us. We pick up the best talent, so this is I'm really proud of. Guillaume Bourque, game designer. Dave Richard, lead game designer. Mainly we, we prepare the design for uh, all the, the features we do here at the, the Behavior, which are mostly flare objects. Uh, movie glass, a bit of uh, plant side in interaction. Stéphane Beauchamp, lead programmer. Yann Frédéric Dussault, lead programmer. One of the things I'm really proud that the team accomplished this year, I would say the release of the new hangers in both programming and art. François Boucher, technical lead level designer. Stéphane Horvath, level designer. We started designing a couple planets. There's our core, but there's lots of uh, other planets that we're working on right now. Corentin Chevan, art director. Emmanuel Garcia, lead artist. Something we, we did this year is the refactor of the hangers. Everybody is happy with the, with the new style and the new look. Etienne Beaulieu, UI designer. Christine Marsh, lead UI designer. Something that was really fun to do this year was to help uh, the art team working on the hangers and all the different planet sites that they did. Maxime Goulet, 3D artist. Maxime Guindon, 3D artist. Quite a few things we worked on this year. There's the cell plant hanger, the biggest one. Ryan McLean, 3D artist. Alexandre Devaux, 3D artist. We did the flares, the last one is the lockers, which got amazing reviews. We continuously get new projects to work on, which is really cool. So what I'm the most proud of is to be able to get all those talents together and making sure that they are able to perform at the highest level they can. Doing the asteroid anger and all the other angers after that was quite an achievement. I think the asteroid anger is really cool. The way it works and the modular aspect of it and how it grows. It was a lot of fun. It was a nice uh, challenge to tackle. And I think uh, we took it on pretty well. Uh, I'm also proud of the flares we're making. They're really mm -hmm. cool. They're funny stuff. And uh, people seem to like them a lot. I think I'm most proud of the work that we've done on Moby Glass. It's such a huge, huge feature. We're making a, an OS, so we're making an operating yeah. system for in a thousand years in the future. We're really pushing to always stay in fiction. Every decision that we take is trying to fit with the grand scheme of, of things, the great vision. It's cool. I'm really proud of the communication that's been going on between the different disciplines here at Behavior. Whether it's programming, level design, UI design, artist, everybody communicates very well. I'm just so proud of working on a big team like this and with such talented people. We get to work with people that made games that we love. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can say them, but <laughs> they made some of my favorite games and they're on my team and they teach me every day. I think this year is going to be pretty big because we're doing the first step into the, the persistent universe. Uh, we'll be building more and more planet. This is what I want to be able to show. Uh, not at this CitizenCon, but the next CitizenCon. The planet side location, you know, they're really mm -hmm. complex location. They have lore, it must be like the most immersive environments we've ever seen. That's one of the, the big tasks that we had to make this year. We're creating all the interiors for the gameplay. So for when the player comes in, he can go by at the shops, parts for the, their ships or for their clothing, and it's all that, that we're really excited to see. We just started uh, working with the uh, developers and programmers to have a Moby Glass in-game, finally. I think in the coming months and in the year, we'll have we'll have something like solid to be, to be able to give to the players and, and start developing all the different apps that, that will go into it. I believe that we're going to be uh, Delivering planets? I hope yeah, we're delivering planets. planets and more planets. More shops and franchises yeah. uh, for you guys to trade and buy new equipment, buy new ships. For a Star Citizen, as soon as we have a new feature and we're able to release it, we get the feedback from the community, and this is amazing. We get feedback every month. I've never been part of anything like that. It's, uh, it's pretty wild. Every month, we're going to put out something new, so hopefully the fans will enjoy what we got for them. This community, we're part of it, and what the other studios are making, it's really cool. We see it online, it's really fun. You know, once in a while I go on forums and I can you know, just chat with, chat with the, the community, which is amazing. Knowing that there is so many fans looking at us, following us, seeing the development on Star Citizen, I think it's giving us the energy to move forward with the development of the project. We're gamer, gamers ourselves and we have high expectations when we want to play a game that we're waiting for and we like. So I know uh, how the community feels towards our game and they really have high expectations and we're there to to give it to them. So, uh, uh, I mean, Behavior do a great, I mean, a fantastic job. So you're gonna see some stuff later on that they're also
quite involved in, but uh, they, you know, the hangars and most of the planet side environment and a lot of the planet side module is stuff they're working on. Um, oops. I guess we went to this bit now. I guess we didn't have a little slide with what Baby did. Hang on, can I go back? Nope, there wasn't one. All right. Anyway, Behavior uh, doing an awesome job. And uh, let me go back before I go here. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, no, but it's, yeah. Uh, no, but I mean, you know, they actually, you know, a long time ago, back before uh, I actually launched uh, launched the game back in 2010 and 2011. Uh, you know, I was considering coming back and doing uh, games again, and I was sort of thinking about, well, do I want to go and do something that I've been very well known about, or do I want to do this new thing that I kind of think would be really interesting to build? And uh, so I actually, you know, Behavior was uh, one of the groups that um, you know, I thought, okay, you know, I think there's a lot of talent in Montreal. I talked to them, and they actually provided some early uh, support um, for my very early demo and, and efforts, which was great. So uh, there's a little bit of them helping out made us be able to go and launch in October 2012, and it's very nice to have them part of the family and doing such an amazing job because, you know, in terms of the quality level of uh, the environments and art they're doing, it's exceptional. I mean, Montreal has an incredible talent base, and one of the advantages we have because of that is a lot of people from you know other places in Montreal like Ubisoft or Warner Brothers or whatever that you know they see they you know, love spaceships who doesn't love spaceships and so they're all going okay can I go work on Star Citizen so you know we've got actually the team at Behavior has people that have been working on you know some of the biggest uh, AAA games uh, for for the last you know, X number of years and uh, they're uh, they're really you know you're only going to see it get better I'm like really happy and impressed. So speaking of that, so we went, so now we get on this slide. Um, <laughs> hey, now you jump. Now, I've been told, so I think everyone here, there was actually, we have a nice, very pretty double page brochure. So um, I was told that uh, the first 890 went on sale about an hour ago and sold out in one minute. So she's uh, <laughs> a bit of crazy. Uh, so I think the next one is at midnight tonight. I think we're doing it every five hours. Uh, so, um, Anyway, it, you know, the thing that I would say about this is actually is the first ship that we sort of white boxed and designed out of uh, behavior. And so this was done by Quarantine and Nicholas Ferrand, who, uh, uh, you know, Quarantine's the art director at behavior, and Nicholas Ferrand is an incredibly talented um, concept artist that's worked on lots of movies and a bunch of other stuff and happens to live in Montreal. And uh, I think they did a pretty amazing design uh, on the 890 Jump. I think you guys all have a fancy brochure for it. Uh, but yes, it's, uh, if you want to hang out with your friends and cruise the star system in style, I think it's the ship to fly in. And uh, just you know, one thing that I think is important, because uh, I did notice some chatter on the, uh, on the forums about it, is that it's a different size ship and a different arm ship than what we'd originally spec'd out. I mean, essentially what we do, and this is, kind of an, this is a, sort of an aside, but uh, you know, the Reclaimer was a much smaller ship in the specs, but once we got the actual 3D concept model in and we started to size it up next to the Constellation and the other ships and scaled it up for what we thought the size should be for, say, the cockpit, it was quite clear that it was a much bigger ship. And the same really was the case with uh, the 890 Jump. I mean, when we looked at it, the proportions, and, you know, if you went back, I went back here to this. Where is it now? That's not really in a 70-meter-long ship, basically. <laughs> so, so essentially, I, you know, and I know there was a bit of chatter about the fact that um, the 890 was uh, you know, fairly pricey. But really, the, the way everyone should think about this is that's supporting the game, supporting all this development that we're doing. You can earn the game, the ship in the, in the universe. You don't, need to, you don't need to buy it. You don't need to, to do any of that. But if you want to support, then it's awesome because it sort of allows us to make things bigger and better, and I'd love to make things bigger and better. Um, but uh, but I, I, I think that this kind of ship and things like the Reclaimer and some of the specialty ships sort of are going to make the universe and adventuring around it uh, much richer and much more real because you sort of have all these different ships with different roles, and it's actually really interesting to have real players run them instead of AI at the very beginning when you get into the universe. So it's kind of nice to have a, a populated world where you have certain different classes of ships. So I'm looking forward to getting into the game and seeing players run their Idress Corvette and you know, have some of their friends with their Hornets on the deck and sort of do this kind of sort of co combined uh, arms uh, 
coordination and, and then some other people show up, you know, a group of pirates and they try and take the Idris out. I mean, that, that's kind of an emergent gameplay that I don't think I've seen in any other game and I, that is something that Star Citizen is definitely going to deliver. And uh, I'm totally curious because I'm already amazed by what people do just in Arena Commander with just a few ships. So, you know, having people be able to, you know, fly big ships with other small ships that le launch off them and sort of, you know, command other people with their, you know, give sort of air tactical combat orders to people flying fighters. It's going to be pretty, pretty interesting. Or some people may just want to trade and have some people to protect them. So I think that's kind of one of the things that makes Star Citizen special. And I think it's one of the things that will make the game different than what people have done before. And the 890 Jump is a, this is the version of the, this is a, you want to cruise in style. I mean, just to let you know, by the way, 123 feet. Uh, Paul Allen's octopus is 120, uh, 123 meters. Paul Allen's octopus is 126 meters. So basically, you're cruising like Paul Allen if you've got one of these things. Uh, all right, enough about the 890 jump. Let's move on. Here we go. So uh, the last studio um, we're going to uh, have a video from, and uh, afterwards we're going to do some live demonstration for you guys, uh, is the Austin studio. Uh, it's our first studio that we started at, and we've, uh, you know, as we've grown, we've sort of refactored how we're doing development, and so each one of the studios is starting to specialize in an aspect of the game. So Austin is focusing on the Persistent Universe. Tony Zurovec is the director of the Persistent Universe. Um, he can't be with us tonight because he just uh, had a baby son um, earlier this week. So congratulations, Tony and Margarita, who's his wife. Um, so, uh, but, you know, we've taken the team in Austin and we've, we're focusing them on Persistent Universe and the other thing that we do in Austin is we do a lot of the online operations, so running the servers for Arena Commander, ultimately the Persistent Universe. Uh, a lot of the, you know, our, one of our big QA hubs is Austin, the second one's in the UK. Uh, and uh, sort of the sort of publishing operations when we deliver um, patches and all that stuff to you is done in Austin. But, Let's, uh, let's hear from them instead of me. My name is uh, Tony Zorbeck and I'm the director of Persistent Universe and I'm just really excited to be working with uh, so many bright individuals on such a groundbreaking project. I've always been attracted to games that present the player with uh, highly detailed environments and then give them the freedom to pursue their own interests and that's ultimately the underlying objective. A lot of the ships, they come by my desk and I do final polish on a lot of them. Some of them I've built completely, like the 300i. You know, the racing thing has been a, uh, a thing that's been uh, kind of going on lately, you know, with the Murray Cup that we had and the M50. Yeah, well, Chris wanted the M50 to have that Formula One look. So I long elongated the nose and I put the little fins in the front and, and the paint job on it. So, so. Yeah. But that's the beauty about it, you know, we can always tweak our ships, you know, it's not like a final game, it's out and that's what you get. Yeah. It's like, you know, we can always make our ships better. <laughs> Hey, I'm James Wright. I'm a senior game engine programmer. Having Large World complete will give us the technology we need to build truly massive star systems that give the, the player of our game the experience you really expect in a game like Star Citizen. My name is Tom Davies. I'm a senior gameplay programmer. From the galaxy view, we can look at all of the star systems that exist in the galaxy, and a designer can come in here and, and edit the properties uh, of a particular star system. We can look at a star system as a whole and all of the elements within a system, the planets and the moons and the sun and the jump points. Uh, so this is the Sol system, so we can see Mercury here and Venus and Earth. And we can go in and we can edit the properties of, of any of these elements. Hi there, I'm Sean Tracy. I'm the Engine Technical Director at Cloud Imperium Games. Mm -hmm. Absolutely the most interesting challenge is the scale. Um, and I don't even just mean scale of production, I mean actual physical scale within the game is absolutely enormous. In typical MMOs, you tend to see a lot of very narrowly focused missions. Uh, go here, do this, and they may string a number of those together, but it's still very much dictated by the designer in terms of what you're doing, what the order is, etc. If you contrast that with a more typical game to where you hand craft all the individual levels, you're able to do something that's much more interesting in terms of you can control 
the pacing, you can control the tension, you can have a variety of, you know, sub-objectives that are all piece of the puzzle of accomplishing that larger, you know, all-encompassing objective. We're going to try to basically find a middle ground in between those two extremes to where we can algorithmically generate this multi-objective content that's going to have you know, a beginning, a middle, an end, to where you may wind up having missions that are created such that first you receive a distress call and you don't know what you know what's going on. You wind up going over there and it turns out that it's a freighter under attack by pirates. And so you take out the pirates, but you don't actually kill all of them and one of them you wind up interrogating. That pirate in turn winds up giving you the location of a remote pirate outpost and you go there and you take out the pirate outpost and then you wind up uh, ascertaining the location of where the entire you know, pirate organization for that sector is storing their treasure, but of course it's going to be guarded, you know, very heavily defended. The point is that each one of these little components is something that a designer has intricately crafted and, and then we're going to look for ways to which we can logically combine these elements together and maintain thematic consistency, maintain a, a sufficient level of gradually rising uh, tension, action, uh, an increase in the rewards that are being offered to the player, so that each one of the missions that you wind up undertaking is going to have a lot more to it than just go here, do this specific objective, and then you're done. And yet, we'll still be able to offer the players an absolutely gargantuan amount of content. My name's Kortzos, Senior Technical Artist at Cloud Imperium. So our goal is to try to write some art tools and art structures and guidelines to build just basically the entire Persistent Universe, which is no small task. Thankfully, we at Star Citizen were able to push things a lot further than we were in the past, especially with oh. hardware, you know, all that kind of stuff. So we had to really kind of take it to the next level. And I think we've really nailed on something here. Characters are one of the pillars needed to create a convincing world. And the more convincing the world, the more enjoyable the experience is going to be for the players. The player experience is going to be improved considerably by the fact that we're actually simulating all of these NPCs in the background. Product prices, the missions being offered, which NPCs you see in which area, which ships you see in which area, what they're doing in those areas, this is all going to be dictated by the economic simulator that's going to establish context for the entire system. If you see something occurring, you know, uh, within a particular, you know, section of space, you see an NPC doing something, it's because there is logical, rational reason in the course of this entire fully functional economy why that's, you know, why that's happening. One of the things that we've been developing is the skeleton for our, our main character. Uh, our original skeleton, which you can play in the hangar, you run around getting your ships, is a very old skeleton. There's a lot of little things like uh, we didn't realize that the hips were locked in the Y and X translation, which we've unlocked. And now instead of having a character like running straight down a rail, our character actually has bob and, and weave, and you kind of get that more natural animation. Uh, there's actually going to be a wide variety of ways by which NPCs are made, you know, uh, more unique. Things like their level of intoxication, exhaustion, you know, and various other things. So a bartender is not just going to uh, stand by the bar and dole out drinks. He's going to actively serve patrons. He's going to sweep the floors and a variety of other such things. There are going to be millions of NPCs getting simulated, and that's going to lend context to the missions and the characters that you'll see in the various locations throughout the game. The only reason why you would see a freighter or a pirate in a particular place is because it makes logical sense within the greater game why they're actually there. I'm John Erskine, I'm the head of Live Operations. NOC stands for Network Operations Center, and so the NOC team is responsible for monitoring all of the technical operations of the company, including the live game servers, all of the development environments, a lot of the internal processes, so that if there are any technical issues, we're aware of them immediately and we can take action to resolve them. The operations team includes a lot of different functions, including the platform that serves the website and account information for the game. It includes building the game once it's been completed by the developers and the artists and the designers so that we can make a build that QA can test that can then be published to the servers and ultimately patched out to the public so that they can play the game. 
We've also continued to grow our operations team. A year ago, it was very small, and a lot of the servers just sat under people's desks in various places, and now we have fancy server rooms and bigger operations and live servers that the public can play on. So there's a lot of growth happening over the last year and a lot more coming in next year. I'm Justin Benford. I'm Keegan Stanifer. Jeffrey Peace. Melissa Estrada. Andrew Hussey. Gerard Manzanares. What do y'all think some of the funniest bugs are? Freelancer breakdancing is probably the funniest one that I've seen. Um, when you crouch, your knees go through your back. Yeah, the yes. character folding in on itself. Yeah. Yeah. Getting stuck in the chair. Yeah. Then your character looks like he's panicking. I, big, huge <laughs> eyeballs flying around, yeah. losing your face. <laughs> <laughs> the freelancer leaving the hangar. Oh, yeah, did a backflip. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Constellation. Uh, 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 so they just decided to, like, my people need me. So my favorite moment here uh, was obviously the day I got hired, which was only a couple weeks ago. Um, but I'm here, and uh, we're going to make a big difference here. Favorite moment? Uh, I think the ice bucket challenge was pretty exciting. Probably when we asked our mocap talent to act out toilet and bar animations. I think the most exciting thing happened to me recently, from this year anyway is uh, getting the task to make this is bullshit banner. My favorite moment? Fan booze, baby. Fan booze. My favorite moment is now. What's next? I think it's time to get out of our hangars. I mean, we've been staring at the same four walls for about a year now, so it's time to open up the world. We're going to let you walk around on the planet side, eventually get your friends in there, the social module is on its way, and then we'll be bringing you all the other planets as we start bringing them online. The next thing after that, we start connecting up all these planets and all these systems, letting you experience the persistent universe for the first time. Well, citizens, it's been a fun ride, and I hope it continues. Happy birthday, Star Citizen. Uh, so we have some of the members from Austin here tonight. Where are you guys? You want to throw your hands up back in this way, I think. Where we got? I can't see you. It's dark back there, but... We got Mark and Chris Smith. I think uh, Mark Hong, who you guys haven't met, but he's a awesome production manager. Uh, I think one of our guys from QA, Andrew. Uh, and what's that? Okay. All right. Uh, anyway, they're back there doing an awesome job. And another person you saw in the video, Sean Tracy. Um, where are you, Sean? Come up. So Sean joined us from Crytek. Uh, so you may know him from, you may know Sean from the next uh, Great Starship, but actually Sean was one of the principal people at Crytek that made Star Citizen happen. So uh, there was a fair number of, um, I, I guess the best way to describe it would be Wing Commander fans at um, Crytek. Uh, and Sean, when I first was talking, because I was talking to both uh, Crytek and I was talking to Epic about the Unreal Engine, because uh, those are the two sort of high-end engines. Uh, and I was, uh, you know, trying to figure out what would be best to sort of put Star Citizen on. And, uh, you know, Sean was, <laughs> let me put it this way, a great evangelist. And, uh, and, and not only helped out, and, and actually was helping long before I ever did the two. I mean, back, I think we first had our conversations back in, uh, well, even maybe 2010. 2010 yeah. And then when I started on the, the actual prototype, at the end, like 2011 towards the end, you started That's to right. help out. And, Sean also marshaled other Wing Commander fans back in Crytek to, to like after hours or give tips. So that's, you know, Paul Rendell, who's our uh, lead uh, engineer here in LA, who's incredibly amazing and talented, uh, was another one of these uh, amazing people that helped me do the uh, original awesome. prototype. And I wouldn't be able to do it without Paul's help and Sean's help and a few other people uh, that are still at Crytek. Um, and, uh, so, so Sean, even though he's recently only newly part of the team, has really been part of the team for quite a few years. Uh, and uh, we're going to um, do a demonstration, I think, of something that the Austin team also. have been working on. Right? You want to say a word? Come on, say a word. You might as well. Okay. Say okay. hi to everyone. I'll say, say, I'll say, say they're like, they're like, and, say, yeah, and, and also, you us. may want to mention who's worked on, 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 the, on what we're going to show you here in a little bit. because. Uh, Everyone's worked really hard to yeah. put together a, uh, let's put it, 
This is a prototype in the way that we did a multi-crew uh, prototype to sort of give you an idea of the uh, kind of the ambition in detail that we want to go. And it's, you know, caveats, very early, very rough. Very. Be way more, you know, look at, you can see how we've gone from Hornet 2012 to Hornet now. Yeah. So you'll, the same progression will happen. But I think when you see what we show you, you'll get an idea of why we're so excited to be making this game and we're so happy that you guys are backing us to make it because the end result's going to be, I think, incredible experience. But there Absolutely. You go. Um, so first and foremost, I need to thank all the guys back in Austin. Uh, for the last, anyways, two, three weeks, uh, leading right up to this event, it's been uh, really long days. Uh, so Court, Nate, Jake, everybody in the Austin studio, Rob, um, it's really nice that you guys, uh, <laughs> that you guys still stayed so late with me, even through the night last night. So, yeah, it was right down to the wire, but uh, I think you guys will appreciate it. So. Yeah, cool. Uh, so well, you get, get it rolled, right and let me, while you're talking, let me see if I have anything to say on... All right, so it takes a few minutes to boot this thing up. Uh, but, yeah, ultimately, I mean, I, like I said, you know, we've... Uh, with Austin, the idea is to sort of focus Austin on the persistent universe. Behavior um, reports into Austin, building the persistent universe together, because it's ultimately it's the house that everything lives inside. So everything we're doing in space and arena commander, everything we're doing in the first-person shooter aspect and the combat, ultimately will all fold into this huge persistent universe that is sort of all built at a level of scale and detail that um, you know I most people probably think we're totally crazy for trying to do. Uh, and we may be, but you know, if you don't, if you don't dream, you don't ever achieve anything. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, and, and the funny thing is, when you do dream, for you know, look what happens, right? So, a lot of other people have the same dream. Look at the progress that we've made over over the you know, last. I mean, I'd like to say two years, but if you think about when we finished the funding and getting studios up and running, I mean, it's really not been two years of solid development, it's been a lot less than that because it takes time to scale up and, and hire people. So the amount of progress that's been made considering the scale ambition of the game is um, pretty uh, impressive, at least on my side. I mean, you know, if you look at other games, they take, you know, Destiny took five years plus, GTA 5 took five years plus. So, um, so I think our team's going. I'm just seeing where we're going. I think it's three minutes to load up a lot of stuff, basically. Um, yeah, so I need to tap dance a bit more. Uh, but, uh, but no, Austin is focusing, so the things they're focusing on is that they're um, fleshing out the back-end uh, networking infrastructure that the whole persistent universe lives in. Um, you know, they're working on the large world, um, which also we're doing some support in uh, sort of LA and uh, actually in Shanghai, because we have a, another ex crytek uh, engineer that um, wrote a whole sort of MMO system that's in CryEngine, and he's helping change us over for the, the large world. His uh, name is uh, Alan Chen, and he's also another incredible, talented programmer. Uh, and so we're building that. Um, we're creating the environments, doing art direction for the overall planet side uh, stuff, and designing the system. So it's sort of the mission system of the Persistent Universe. Um, you saw sort of a little bit of the beginning of the, uh, the rough like system editors and universe editor stuff, uh, which sort of had very sort of rough graphic-y stuff. And I'm sure it's going to get more polished over time. Uh, but it's a tool that we use to build all the stuff. And so the bones are getting built there, and that is 100% the focus of uh, the Austin studio now. Um, okay, we're ready now. So let's switch over to the computer feed. Let's go. You want to go? So what we're going to show you is kind of a little idea of what the gameplay is going to be like without the about the CryEngine streaming issues. So, uh, and by the way, it's just the beginning of it, really. So, uh, <laughs> but you know, we have the, the it's the same, it's the, uh, multi-ship local physics grid stuff that's working. So um, as the same stuff, Sean can get out. And, uh, so we just come out of warp um, outside Stanton, um, uh, which is uh, the Art Court planet. I can't remember which Stanton it is, one of the Stantons. It's like Stanton 3, Stanton 4, I don't know which one. 
Dave Haddock was here, he'd be able to tell me. But are you here, Dave? I'm not sure he, he he was up uh, editing the opening montage, so I think he may actually be sleeping right now. Uh, but you know, as as uh, Paul said, and this is our cargo base that we have inside our constellation. But as Paul said, the uh, you know this is one of the things that we quite think is great is that we can fly around in a whole environment and then work around uh, in our ship while our ship's flying around. And the prototype we wanted to do is really sort of show you sort of a very early prototype in engine of what it's going to be like when we land on a planet. So uh, do we want to ask for permission when you get a chance? Sure. All right. Got to sit down. Okay, you can only ask for landing permission. Corp Tower, this is commercial vessel Calypso requesting EDL assistance. Thank you for contacting landing. Audio down? I heard the entry. It's like low, Descent right? And Can we pull up the audio? Initiated. Assuming navigation Assist. Enjoy your stay on ArcCorp. Stand by, starting scan. By entering Area 18, you agree to abide by all laws and regulations set by ARC Corp and the UEE. Any violation will result in immediate prosecution. You're clear to go. Please exit the checkpoint. Yeah. 
we bring the volume down a bit. Uh, so we we just uh, went through sort of kind of the idea would be you'd be flying in space, you'd be in orbit, you'd request landing. That's all. This was all in engine. Uh, we'll do a lot better of the transitions coming down, but it's all going to be seamless. You walk around, look around in your ship as you land. You land, you get permission, and uh, now we're uh, sort of in the sort of main uh, concourse area of uh, Stanton, and of course there's. Uh, Turn around, let's look at the other place before we go into the one shot we actually have working. <laughs> uh, but basically, this is here where you would go. You would go to you know, buy a ship or buy items or go to a bar to uh, you know, get a new mission or you know, go down a dark alleyway to get a sort of do a black market deal or get a sort of slightly gray mission. Uh, and a lot of the planets will be very big, you know, like something like Earth and Terra will have lots of locations. Some will be smaller, like a, just a landing point, a much more uh, contained area. Uh, but all of the players, that, all the places have this level of like incredible. I mean, this isn't just um, kind of FPS like AAA bodies. This is significantly more than you get on uh, any, like, even an Xbox One or a PS4. This is sort of uh, another level. I believe what 30 million polys at our high point, right? So. That's a lot. <laughs> now we'll optimize it, but that's a hell of a lot running in. Um, so yeah, I mean, and obviously we're at very early stages. So like in terms of the AI and the cycles of people going around, you're not seeing that level. But as you land on the planets, the actual, uh, you know, the play, the different AI moving around, the characters moving, the NPCs moving around, they'll be there based because of the economy, and they'll be going about their day-night cycles. Uh, and you know, if you land on a sort of bustling, successful planet, there'll be, you know. A lot of people going about the business. The place will look great. It will be thriving. If you're down on a sort of planet that's sort of not doing so well, then you'll see graffiti and maybe there's more crime and there's not quite as many people. And we're out, we're also going to have a fair amount of sort of uh, NPC sort of P, uh, PVE kind of stuff that's now going to happen on the planet. That was something we weren't originally going to do, but with the full FPS mechanics and system and the modular sort of procedural system that Tony's working on. And you know, if you remember when we first introduced them, the first um, game job he had was he was the AI programmer on Ultima 7, I believe. So uh, he loves AI. So he's got this whole massive plan for the economy and how the AI is going to run around in that. And so all of that, this is just early like placeholder people, but there'll be people going about, you'll be hearing what they talk, and it's all at a sort of fidelity and level that you would normally expect in you know, uh, you know, a high AAA sort of FPS game or an open sandbox game, uh, but maybe at a whole level of sort of uh, another level of visual fidelity. Um, but let's uh, let's go into uh, so one example would be then we'd go into a shop dumpers depot I think we've shown a little bit of before it's a bit more fleshed out but let's go inside and dumpers depot is a place that you can go and sort of get stuff repaired um, you know get some sort of secondhand uh, used items and equipment but this is the high this is the whole like this is the vision of, of star citizen you're out in space and you've got the high fidelity of your ships, and you get down on the planet, and you're running around, and the fidelity's the same. Come on, it's the environment, hey, it's characters around. Uh, Take a look around. Everything's for sale. So we have. And a shopkeeper. So we can't do much beyond this, but soon we will. But th this is really to sort of show you the ambition and the scope and the level of uh, detail that we want to deliver the whole universe and we are designing and building everything so that we will be able to sort of do stuff at this level um, on a lot of different planets. I mean, it involves uh, some stuff that we'll be talking about um, going forward. Um, we have this thing which is sort of a modular system we call the tier system and it allows us to have different uh, architecture types and put them together fairly quickly. And so it's sort of a pseudo, like partly designed, partly procedural system, which is sort of what Tony was alluding to in, in the Austin um, piece that he was doing. And um, Anyway, I, you know, this was a combination of work by the Austin team and the Behavior team who uh, built the Arc Corp um, landing environment and built this depot. Uh, and there you go. So I hope you like that. It's kind of... And thank you, Sean. And we'll optimize that more going forward. All right. So that's what we're doing. Should have had that slide on earlier. Uh, all right, and uh, planet side model is 215. 
So I thought at the end of this, we'd just sort of talk about the roadmap, just so you guys are aware. Um, dates are subject to change, just to let you guys know. Uh, but at the end of this year, we're planning on Arena Commander 1.0 with the, the features that we talked at. Um, we are going to be showing uh, the FPS uh, module uh, at the end of this month at PAX Australia. Uh, but uh, at the beginning of 2015, towards the beginning, we're going to do the FPS module that everyone gets because uh, there's a lot of other things that go into making sure that everyone can get it and it has all the different maps and levels beyond sort of a, a sort of controlled uh, uh, demonstration of the features. Then the planet side social module will be after that. Arena Commander 2.0, which will be the multi-crew ship combat. And that's the idea with Arena Commander, is we sort of use that as the test bed for all the space stuff that will go into the universe. So we'll add new game modes and missions to Arena Commander that will sort of simulate uh, missions that may happen when you're in a multi-crew ship or, you know, like, uh, you know, defend the Idris or attack the Idris or a mission from, you know, making sure this cargo ship goes from point A to point B and one team's trying to take the cargo ship out, another team's trying to defend it. So the, the arena commander for us is a test bed to try out game styles and missions and game mechanics and plays that will go into the position universe. Um, Squadron 42, chapter one. Um, and so we haven't really, I mean, you saw a little bit of a, a peak of Squadron, uh, like some of the scale when you saw that Shubin. And by the way, that was not textured, right? So just the UK, guy, UK guys want to let you know that that was a gray box. Uh, so it's going to look like a whole level, of, but the level of scale and detail in it. And, uh, you know, I've, I'm privy to a bunch of stuff that we haven't shown you guys yet. And Squadron 42 is a bit difficult because we don't really want to give away the story and everything. But I will say that Squadron 42 in itself, if I was making a next generation Wing Commander, like that would be Squadron 42 and maybe Squadron 42 is even a little more than that. So I have to say that the level of design and implementation on the missions and in terms of flying, being down on the ground, different things, there's puzzles, it's like, it's, it's crazy. It's like, it's, that I, would, I would put Squadron 42 up against any other AAA um, sort of console title, just by itself. Um, now it's a, it's a huge amount of content. Uh, I believe that uh, you know uh, they're estimating something like 50 hours to play all the way through the story. Uh, so, so they're breaking it up uh, into episodes. So think of it like a a mini series event. So that's why episode one will be the first one that we launch, and then I think our plan is to roll them out in sort of um, three month increments until we've done all five episodes, and then. Squadron 42 as the whole campaign will be complete. And while we're doing that, we're um, also uh, expanding planet side to the Persistent Universe. So you'll be playing Persistent Universe as you're going through Squadron 42 um, in the episodes. And when it's all done, we'll kind of have the game done. But we'll never really be done because we're always going to be adding cool new stuff to it. Uh, but that's the order that we're doing. So that's kind of the 2015 order and lineup. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's in production. I mean, there's a lot more people obviously on the project now than there were one year ago. And so you're going to start to see the benefits and fruits of that in uh, this coming year. And, uh, you know, I mean, I see a little head of when you guys are going to see it, and I'm pretty excited. I can't, you know, there's, there's stuff I really want you guys to see and have fun with. Um, so this is what you guys have done. So, because, I mean, you know, the one thing, you know, we say, game's about community, and it, but it really is. I mean, we don't have a publisher, we don't have an investor, we only have a community that has come together to make this game, uh, which is just a shared dream. And I, and I thought, you know, it would be interesting for you guys to sort of, you know, to reflect. I mean, because this, I mean, what has been done in a relatively short time is, at the beginning, you know, we had seven citizens, which Basically, I don't know if you know the story, but we were testing the site and we took the firewall down. And for, I don't know what it was, it was uh, just serendipity or something. There was a Reddit thread going on, whatever happened to, I think Freelancer it was. And then they, someone looked up what I was doing and then they saw that it was a registration for Robert Space Industries. And someone went to the site and we'd actually taken the firewall down at that instant to test out the registering on the site. And so we had some people registering and we were there with the web guys at the time going, are these some guys you know? What's happening? And I don't know who they are. And then we figured it out it was on the Reddit. And so, uh, and it was actually, I mean, I don't know what, but you know, that was one of those moments that I, it, it's just, that's fate because, because of that, 
sort of the whispers went out, and then when we actually opened the website up, I think you know we had 10,000 people in the first day, which is pretty amazing. And I think it was partly because of that. That's testament to today's world and virality and Reddit and all these other amazing things. Um, uh, you know, we obviously had no money. Uh, <laughs> we're in a deficit. We spent a bunch doing the demo. Uh, there were five. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say five developers, but five people on the team. It was a very small. I mean, Ben was part of it. Uh, there was me. I mean, there was people helping out, like Sean and Paul, uh, in their sort of spare time. Uh, and uh, Dave Haddock uh, was there, and uh, uh, Sandy was putting together the whole like plan for the for the. Uh, the website and how we were going to roll it out and the crowdfunding campaign, which uh, I think it was a pretty good plan. So, um, and then and we had three ships model, which were done by CG Bot. Uh, so, uh, and then obviously we did the campaign. It went well. One year later, we had 270,000 of you guys, um, which is pretty impressive, although not as impressive as we are now. We had 21 million, I think. Uh, I can't remember, I thought we hit 20 during CitizenCon last year, but I could be wrong, maybe we hit 21. Uh, and uh, we had uh, 90 people working on the game, although that was not in-house. That was, uh, I think we had about 50 people in-house and about uh, 40 uh, contractors, uh, or maybe about 40 in-house and 50 contractors, and we had 17 ships modeled. And then today we have 615,000 people that are registered on the site, 56 million in crowdfunding, uh, 280 people working around the world. So if you take a think about it, you, got, you guys have given jobs to 280 people, which is pretty awesome. Um, especially, you know, I mean, sometimes the game business goes down, sometimes it goes up. So uh, you guys are helping the g game business go up a little bit. So thank you very much. Uh, but no, just, you know, to allow that many people to get to work on a game that they really love uh, and have passion about is, I think, you, if you talk to a lot of people working on Star Citizen, they'll tell you how much they just love working on the game and the process and doing it with all you guys. Uh, and yes, we have a lot of ships modeled, although we haven't shared them all for you. But that is uh, a pretty amazing achievement, what we've done in a relatively short order of time. Uh, as a thank you, uh, all this week, everybody can fly every ship in Arena Commander, irrelevant of what you've got. Um, so. Thank you to such an amazing, amazing community. And I think it's appropriate to end with the fact that this game, uh, what we're building together is made possible by all you guys. Um, as I mentioned at the very beginning, although if I get that back up, uh, that is the mosaic with every one of the organizations that is part of uh, the community right now. Uh, and it's pretty amazing. And I'm constantly amazed and humbled so I would like to thank all the teams and everyone around the world that's working on Star Citizen. I would love, I want to thank everybody that has back to everyone that's part of the community. Uh, it's an amazing ride. It's only just beginning. I can't wait to see what you guys think and experience and enjoy of what we're going to do this next year and going forward. So I think that's the end of my presentation. But thank you all, and let's have a drink or two. I, I, by the way, I don't feel like I should do this. Let's get the, uh, can, I, can I get all the team members up here? Because the people that we've got here as team members should come up here. Because it would be nice if you got to actually see them. Because I, I shouldn't get all the applause because uh, I'm just one guy on this thing. So come on. Come up, team members. Yeah, they're all cam they're camera shy. No, they're coming up here. They should come up here. And of course, there's only a small amount of people that we have. You coming up? You gonna mosh pit? Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna come this way so we. <laughs> hey, 
right, so small, small representation of everyone working on the game. So, and I, ag I agree with Aaron. If so I can't, like, okay, this is going to go in my pocket. But on our side, we're going to clap for you guys. Thank you so much for supporting us. And now we should have a drink.